Hello my friends and welcome to No Nonsense Metal Reviews. I'm George and today I am very pleased to be showing off some more of my latest vinyl finds with another episode of Heavy Relics. It does feel like a long time since I've done a Heavy Relics show but of course the cost of living crisis and other obligations I just haven't quite had the capital to be splashing out on that trying to acquire as much vinyl and classic stuff as I can. But I have managed to find a very neat little collection of uh, vinyl, all from one seller on eBay, a very nice chap who uh, managed to do a little bit of wheeling and dealing with, and have acquired five more albums, which, although I wasn't really searching for any of these on vinyl, I think they're really awesome things to have, and I, I just stumbled upon them and I'm very happy with my purchases. So we'll kick off with uh, an article which I have been wanting to get hold of for quite a long time, primarily actually trying to find a copy on CD because first and foremost, I collect CDs. I just I love my physical copies and I think that CDs are that little bit more transferable. You can listen to it in the car, you can put it on your laptop, I'm still a bit old school and I like to transfer the CD uh, onto the laptop and then onto my uh, MP3 player. But you can, like I say, you can just listen to it on your stereo system, and but you've still got that physical copy there and it's, it's lovely. You can look at it when you want and it just looks great adding to the collection. But I've wanted to find a copy of Destruction's classic live album, Live Without Sense recorded in 1988, I believe, and released in 1989. This is one of the few thrash live albums, but certainly one of the very few that's actually worth bothering with. And this is a bit of a classic. It's a very interesting layout, I will say, because the artwork is actually on the side, which threw me at first, and I nearly dropped the vinyl on the floor. But we've got that classic Mad Butcher artwork there, playing the Puppet Master to the band. Really awesome. On the inside, we've got the full tour, um, release from Agony tour dates there. We've got the full schedule. And then we've got some interesting photographs. We've got cool artwork, grim artwork on the inside there. It's a really nice thing. Although it's a gatefold sleeve, and as you can see, it's in really good condition considering its age. You know, there's a little tiny bit of wear on the corners but I mean tiny tiny negligible still read the spine hardly defaced at all um, gatefold as I say but only a single album which is always a little bit of a shame I will say but insert proper original insert as well there given a little bit of the details a few hello and special thanks to Really nice um, little insert there. Taking a look at that set list then, those tracks, we've got some absolute classic, some real classic Destruction material. If you're not familiar with Destruction, they are one of the Teutonic Four, the German thrash metal, the four biggest or most successful uh, bands to come out of that movement or that, that sub-genre in Germany alongside Sodom. Creator and the Mighty Tankard. But we've got some absolutely ripping material here. Some of my favourite Destruction songs, in fact, we've got Curse the Gods, the Mighty, one of the best riffs ever written, period. If you've not heard that track, you need to make yourself acquainted. Invisible Force, fantastic. Reject Emotions, Mad Butcher, Life Without Sense, another Destruction, absolute classic. Release from Agony and the Mighty Bestial Invasion. It's an absolute ripper. Absolutely love this album. I was chuffed to bits to see a vinyl copy for next to nothing, to be honest. Absolute bargain and a lovely piece. Really, genuinely lovely piece. I'm chuffed to bits with that. Moving on. Fast forward X amount of years and change subgenre slightly. We are leaping to... The Mighty Entombed, in their AD formation, of course, when they became active again, Entombed AD cropped about due to, I suppose, it's going to be a mixture of um, 
personal differences, maybe stylistic differences, legal differences, disagreements, whatever, between uh, the original band, Entombed, that classic pioneering old school death metal band that graced us with the likes of uh, Clandestine, uh, Wolverine Blues, and of course, Left Hand Path. But this album, Back to the Front, released in 2014, I believe. Yep, this is an absolute stormer of an album. It's it's a brilliant album, no doubt at all. Nowhere near as heavy as those early Entombed albums, but a little bit more in line with the, uh, the self-titled release from Entombed and Wolverine Blues, but not as outright death and roll. But we're still given the the amazing vocals of LG Petrov, the late great frontman himself, alongside uh, Nico Elgstrand on guitars, Oli Dalstent on drums, and Victor Brandt on bass. I love that artwork. Absolutely love that artwork. And this is, like I say, this is a really good album. Not nearly as heavy as uh, the last couple of, or the other two, I should say, the other two Entombed AD albums or the classic Entombed albums. No, but it's still a really good album. And this is a beautiful blood red vinyl. Absolutely love that colour. And when you when you hold it up to the light, it looks so cool. Love that. Absolutely love that. Track wise, there are some pretty good tracks there. No doubt about it. We have the opening track, Kill to Live, is a great one. Bedlam Attack, another good track there. You get some really good riffage. You've got plenty of groove. It's the sort of stuff where you can grab yourself a beer and you can head along to head bang along to quite comfortably. Uh, second to none, Bait and Bleed, a personal favourite of mine. Um, Digitus Medius, interesting name, great track. Uh, the Underminer, personal favourite, and Soldier of No Fortune, all really great tracks. And this, although, you know, it's you could say it's not really a heavy relic, it's not even a decade old, but actually it's a really nice thing to have. And I'm sure that you can still buy it new, but I didn't pay very much at all for this, um, this pre-owned copy. And it's in immaculate condition. It's just a lovely thing to have. So we've got Entombed AD with Back to the Front. Absolutely love that artwork. Absolutely love it. And there is, awesomely, a rather nice giant artwork poster, which I've made the effort to dig out now, so I'm going to have to show it off. Look at that. Lovely poster. Absolutely love that. Brilliant little thing to have. It's always nice when you get something like a cool insert card or a nice poster. Just makes the package feel that much more special. So, sticking with the Mighty Entombed AD, the second Entombed AD album, the Mighty Dead Dawn, absolutely love that. What you can't uh, appreciate here is the feel. It's like a, a matte finish um, card outer face on it. Really high quality package though. Again, we've got a nice gatefold. This time, only just a standard black vinyl, but it is on, oh, there's a little poster there for advertisement. Insert with lyrics. Just a normal black vinyl. But we have got the logo and the artwork on the middle there. So that is cool. But this is a really nice thing. As I say, all in absolutely brilliant condition. Love that artwork. It reminds me very much of Carcass. In fact, they certainly had a, a, a favouritism for the uh, anatomical looking art there. Really great. This album is distinctly heavier than Back to the Front. Far, far heavier, way more in line with just classic death metal. And we've got some absolute belters on this album. We've got the opening track, Midas in Reverse. Fantastic track. LG Petrov sounds so good here. It sounds so rough and raspy. Down to Mars to Ride. That's like a heavy metal thrashing track. Really good. As the World Fell is total Death Doom, absolutely love it, crushing groove. Total Death, The Winner Has Lost, Hubris Falls, Not What It Seems, brilliant tracks, absolutely brilliant album. 
really lovely thing to have and I'm, I'm just pleased to have a copy I do have somewhere up here a box set version there uh, from when the album was originally released as I also have a media book version of Back to the Front but you know what I just saw it and I thought this is not very much money at all I've got to treat myself to that so in Toon Day D Dawn Dead Dawn rather Probably my favourite out of those two Entombed AD albums. Absolutely love it. Moving on again. We are going with possibly the greatest gothic, melancholic, death doom band around. Uh, from Yorkshire, I think from Barnsley or Dewsbury area, not quite sure off the top of my head. Just sublime band that is My Dying Bride and this album which was released originally in 2015 this is one of my personal favourite My Dying Bride albums this is Feel the Misery I absolutely love that artwork I want that on a t-shirt it's got to be out there 100% I do love stained glass windows not a, a Christian or a church girl myself but I love stained glass effect absolutely love it this is a double gatefold album really nice package you can just feel the misery emanating from it without even having to play it some truly fantastic tracks here and my father left forever if you want a tear jerking death doom track that's the one to shiver in empty halls oh gives you goosebumps just thinking about it a cold new curse the title track feel the misery is an absolute groover love that track I Celebrate Your Skin, another good one. If you do want to make yourself um, cry and descend into a depressive state, then I Almost Love You is definitely the track for you. And the rather lengthily grand closing track, Within Sleeping Forest. Absolutely love it. There is in here a lyrics book, which really interestingly says on the front here, The Book of Common Prayer and administration of the sacraments and other rites and ceremonies. In short, it's the lyrics. Really nice little thing to have there, really cool. It is just a standard black vinyl, but immaculate. Of course, it's only a few years old, so it shouldn't be too beaten up, but really nice thing to have it's obviously been very well looked after it's just an excellent album and I, I do have a copy of this album on CD of course I think I actually have all yes I do I have all of the My Dying Bride albums on CD I also have um, the Antediluvian Chronicles compilation and I have their live albums so I'm a pretty devoted My Dying Bride fan and this although it was my first vinyl find of theirs absolutely love it it's a fantastic album if you like crushing death doom dirgy riffs aaron stainthorpe's amazing vocals he can do such it's almost like an archaic poetic vocal style that he can deliver there but it's really deep and moving and he can also deliver some really nasty death metal vocals absolutely love it such a fantastic front man and the band they sound superb here those songs are of impeccable quality. Absolutely love it. Check that album out if you like a bit of Death Doom. I would also say check this album out as well. The other uh, My Dying Bride purchase. This is their latest album, which was released in 2020. So it's very new. This was actually still sealed when I got it. Um, an absolute bargain. And you could say, well, you should have left it sealed. You should have kept it sealed. It's more of a collector's thing. No. I want to enjoy these items myself before I ever considered getting rid of anything or selling anything ever, which will probably happen when I'm dead and gone. But I want to enjoy it while I can, while I'm alive. And this album, The Ghost of Orion, is a beautiful album. Very much like um, in, in terms of the depth and power of these songs, very much like Feel the Misery. It's dark, it's deep emotive it's emotional it's brilliant you have some truly beautiful music on this album the album kicks off with your broken shore which is deep and moving brilliant riff work there but it's it's very 
emotive stuff. To outlive the gods. Tired of Tears is probably my favourite track on the album. It's such a deep, emotive, moving piece. I love it. Um, the Long Black Land. The Old Earth. The outro piece there. Your Woven Shore. All beautiful stuff. And what is really cool about this, for multiple reasons, is that it is double album picture disc vinyl. Beautiful. Love it. Something really, really nice. Something really special about picture disc vinyl. I don't have many. I, I can think of a couple. I think I have an immortal picture disc and a Saxon one, but that, that's it. So this is really nice. But what I don't like about a lot of picture disc issues is that picture disc vinyl in a clear plastic sleeve. I don't like that. What I want is this, where it's got its own inner sleeve and it's in the proper artwork outer sleeve. That's what I want. I want the full package. I don't want to feel like I'm being shortchanged. I want the full square artwork with artwork inside. That's what I want. And this is a really, really lovely package. Two lots, as I say, double album, picture disc, lyrics on the inside there. A really awesome, awesome piece to have. Absolutely love it. So if you're not familiar with My Dying Bride, this is as good a place to start as any. They're really quite a uh, unique band. And this is really palatable material. In fact, it's just deep, it's dark. Some people would say, oh my goodness, that's so depressing. It's not depressing. It's just genuine and honest and emotional and a little bit depressing. But Your Broken Shore, Tired of Tears, check those tracks out. So those are my five vinyl finds there, absolutely chock the bits as I say, with all of those records, some really brilliant stuff. Is anyone else a fan of those albums? Anyone else got vinyl copies? I'm very interested to hear your thoughts and opinions on those albums. And if you haven't heard any of those albums, check them out. They are all 100% worth listening to. If you like deep, gothic, death doom, My Dying Bride is a band you absolutely need to hear. If you like good old-fashioned death metal, Entombed AD. And if you like a good, ripping, snorting thrash attack, Destruction, Live Without Sense is a superb place to start. I'm also going to um, show in addition to the vinyl, but I wasn't sure how I could really go about um, showing it off. This little purchase, this is a recent purchase as well. This is, and if you're not from the UK, then you'll probably not be too familiar with this idea, but this is the Iron Maiden Stamps Collection. Now, this is a complete change of pace, I know, but really awesome little thing to have. For whatever reason, Royal Mail and Iron Maiden have come together and they have re- they have released a collection of stamps. You get four different stamps with the classic Maiden artwork on there. We've got the self-titled album cover. We've got the Trooper artwork there. We've got Aces High single. And then we've got uh, more recent artwork from the Senjutsu album, their last album there. And there's some uh, bio and information on the back there. Really cool little thing to have. Then... We've got this rather splendid fold-out display with bio and information. There, really love that picture, that live shot there. And these stamps are live shots of the band. There's eight of those in total, where we've got um, Vancouver 2010, Hammersmith 83, um, Pamplona 88, uh, Quito, 2009, Rio de Janeiro 2001, Helsinki 2018, Twickenham 2008, and Birmingham 2018. Just really cool live shots. So as soon as I saw Maiden, we're releasing Royal Mail stamps, or Royal Mail releasing Maiden stamps, however you want to look at it. I thought, yeah, there's there's serious collector's potential there. Got to get myself a copy. Uh, really nice thing to have, and just a cool collector's item. I'll probably try and find a way of putting them on display somewhere. So, in addition, a heavy future relic, in fact, Iron Maiden stamps. Anyway, thanks again for watching, my friends. Do check back soon for more reviews and recommendations of all the good heavy stuff. Feel free to like and subscribe. It's very, very much appreciated, as always. And do take care, my friends. Stay heavy.